All right, hi everyone, good morning. Uh, some of you who might have been in this stream yesterday might have already seen my face around. Uh, my name is Joe. I do uh, hail from Perth. Please don't hold it against me. Uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys there next year because we are running our first WordCamp next year. Um, and I just want to get an idea before we start on uh, who has used custom post types before. Just put your hand up if you've used custom post types before. All right. Who's used custom fields before, like ACF or, or pods or anything like that? Who has no idea what custom post types or custom fields are? All right. Uh, who hasn't put their hand up yet? <laughs> all right, cool. I just wanted to make sure you guys are all capable of putting your hand up. So I want you to do one more thing for me. Uh, can I just get everyone to stand up? That squeak, right? That's amazing. All right. So I did something when I uh, did my first WordCamp uh, a little while ago um, in March in Cebu. And uh, you guys already have a head start because you already know uh, what a Mexican wave is. And I know that you can all put your hands in the air and you can all stand up. Uh, so sit back down again and we're going to do a Mexican wave and Ricky's going to film it for me. Because uh, I want to make sure that you guys are all awake because I saw a lot of these faces at the after party yesterday. So uh, we're going to start from this side. All right. Uh, so on the count of three, we're going to start a Mexican wave from this side. Are you ready? Are we filming, Ricky? Okay, you ready? One, two, three, go. Come on, up, 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 up. Brilliant. All right. I, my plan is to do that at every WordCamp I ever speak at. So this is the second one. Watch this space. In 10 years' time, I'll have a whole collection of them. Um, I'll put the video up on Twitter. Thanks so much for filming that, Ricky. So uh, I am going to be talking about custom post types and custom fields today. And I just wanted to clarify right up front uh, what all of these things that I am talking about mean. And then there were quite a few people that said they hadn't, hadn't used custom post types or custom fields before. So I'm going to explain what a few of these three letter acronyms actually mean. Uh, so CPT is custom post type, CF is custom field, ACF is actually a plugin called Advanced Custom Fields, and it's a really common way of actually implementing custom fields. Come on in, guys. Um, and POD is not actually an acronym at all, it's just the name of another plugin that I'm going to be talking about a little bit. Um, so why do we care about custom post types and custom fields? Now, I apologize if this goes, uh, is it, if this is a little bit too basic for some of the developers in the room, but I think it's really important because there are a lot of people who are just starting out in their career in WordPress uh, or they're using it for their own uh, business and they don't actually understand why WordPress is so flexible and so valuable. And the reason why I think that WordPress is so amazing is because you can use custom post types and custom fields to really extend the existing WordPress architecture and you can build some really funky stuff with it. Um, it gives you a lot more flexibility than just using a, a plugin that you get off of the repository if you can create your own custom post types. And this is actually where I first came across this concept um, way back when I first started, it wasn't that long ago, but when I first started using WordPress, one of the very first websites that I ever built was for my community group. Um, and we wanted to make a business directory and we were like, cool, let's have a business directory, we'll support local business, seems like a great idea at the time. Um, by the way, don't volunteer with your local community group. It is very unrewarding because nobody ever says thank you. Uh, but uh, we decided we were going to do this business directory. And so I spent hours looking for a plugin that would do exactly what we wanted. And I still didn't find one. Uh, and I think we ended up buying one and then tweaking it. Fortunately, I'm married to a PHP developer, so that made it a little bit easier. Um, but I wish that back then I had known about custom post types and custom fields because it would have been a much better way of doing it. Um, it also makes it a lot easier for those of you who are building websites for other people um, and they're sort of fairly new to WordPress. Um, it does make content management a lot easier for, say, testimonials if you've just got something called testimonials, right? So what is the difference between a post type and a custom field? In a nutshell, there's already a bunch of post types in WordPress and that's actually how WordPress works. Pretty much everything that already exists inside WordPress is a custom post type. So you've got uh, pages, you've got posts, you've got attachments, you've got revisions, you've got navigation menus. They're all stored in the WordPress database as post types. And then you can create your own ones as well. And then we have custom fields. So the difference between a post type and a field is that a field tells you information about a post or about a post type. And it can vary depending on what post type you're talking about. So you have different fields on um, posts versus products, for example. So products is another example of 
a post type. So examples of fields, that you've got your titles, your authors, your SKUs for your products, uh, your price, all of that kind of stuff, that's your fields, right? So where do taxonomies fit into all of this? Because this one was one that caught me out when I first started in WordPress. And the answer is basically there are two taxonomies that um, come as a default with WordPress and you're probably already familiar with categories and tags. But you can create your own custom taxonomies and they're really useful when you need to be able to group posts um, based on a particular field, right? So imagine that you've got a field that you can use to display a group of stuff. That's essentially what a taxonomy is. So if you're trying, apologies that's so big, but Ricky doesn't have my fonts installed. So just pretend that's like handwritten. Okay, uh, so uh, basically if you want to be able to group stuff, so you want say an archive page, then you would use a taxonomy instead of just a standard custom field. And I'll explain um, using a couple of examples how that might be done. So who's used WooCommerce before? Right, any, any of those people, did you say that you hadn't used custom post types before? because that's actually wrong, uh, you have. If you've used WooCommerce, you've used custom post types because WooCommerce itself actually creates products, orders, coupons and refunds in your database. They're all post types. Um, and they also create a bunch of custom fields like price and SKU. Let's say I wanted to write um, a blog and I wanted to have a bunch of book reviews. So rather than just using my standard um, posts, I might create a custom post type for book reviews. Um, and so I was like, cool, I'm going to write a book review about Harry Potter because it's a classic, right? Who doesn't like Harry Potter? Um, and then I was like, what would be really cool is if I could actually review series as well. So I need a way of grouping all of the books in a series. So this comes back to do I use a custom field or a taxonomy? And in this case, I used a taxonomy for that. So you can see in the bottom right that I've actually added a couple of custom taxonomies there for genres and series. Um, and there's an example of where I've created a custom taxonomy and I'll explain how I did that in a second. Um, this is another example. So the directory that I mentioned, it would have been a lot easier for me back then if I'd known about custom post types because then I could have just created one um, that had the exact things that I needed in there. Uh, so let's say I need to display and uh, a bunch of information about uh, charities that I really like supporting. So everyone know what the Ally Project is? Yep, if you don't look it up, they do awesome stuff. Um, I, I, I'm really passionate about accessibility, if anyone wants to have a chat about it later. Uh, she Codes Australia, which I mentioned earlier, is a cause that's um, very close to my heart and I've been involved with them for several years. So let's say that hypothetically I wanted to um, have some custom fields in there. So you can see down the bottom here the custom fields that I've added um, in this little meta box of where they're operating, uh, whether or not they've got charitable status, who to contact if you want to volunteer and be a sponsor in Brisbane for She Codes Australia. So, if anyone's interested there. Uh, so, other examples that you might use a custom post type for testimonials is a really common one. Team members, you want to add a photo, maybe you want their position or something like that. Um, kittens that you want to rescue because kittens are definitely better than doggos. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> but look at that face, it's so cute. Um, so how do I make a custom post type? There are a bunch of ways and there's no one right way. It really depends on what you're looking to achieve. So the first way is PHP code. Looks very simple, right? Yes? Who's made a custom post type using PHP before? Who thinks it's that simple? Yeah. All right, so this is probably more realistic but this is actually more realistic. It's a lot of code uh, and we actually did this when we first started making custom post types um, and my advice would be refer back to the codex a lot um, and while um, when we first started doing it we were using um, the child theme and we were just putting it into the functions.php file. Um, since then my advice would probably use a must use plugin instead because that way if like us you decide that you're going to switch from Genesis to a different theme that's a little bit more lightweight. Sorry Ricky if you're here. Um, so if you decide that you're going to switch themes later then you don't have to drag all of that stuff out of your child theme and put it into a new one if it's in a must use plugin. Um, it is also according to WordPress the best practice. Um, and that actually was the reason why we stopped doing um, our custom post types using PHP was because when Gutenberg came out we had to go and fix everything because it wasn't actually the way that we'd done it. We had to make a few tweaks and stuff to make it compatible with Gutenberg. Now, uh, well, 
about a year or two ago, we started doing it using custom post type UI. Um, this is a really neat little plugin that's on the repository. Um, it's been around since uh, version three of WordPress. It's got over 700,000 installs. Works really well with page builders for those of you that are like Elementor and Beaver Builder fans, which are clearly the only two page builders you ever need to worry about. Um, and it, um, but it does only allow you to use the basic fields that are built into WordPress already. So um, this is a really easy way of creating a custom post type. And one of the perks of doing it this way is that when there are changes to WordPress, it's the developer of CP or the developers of CPT UI who are responsible for making sure that it remains compatible and secure, not yours. So we've actually we started using this a few years back. Um, and this is an example of what it looks like. But one of the biggest disadvantages to using CPT UI is that the page is very, very long. And if you're new to this and it's the first time you've created one, you can see how that might be a little bit overwhelming, right? There's a lot of tick boxes and things there. And keep in mind, this still doesn't allow you to create custom fields. It only allows you to create a custom post type. So now I introduce pods. Um, and pods is another plugin that's on the repository. Um, and I think we're actually doing a whole hallway track straight after this for pods, if anyone's interested in it. Um, and I've just recently started using this. And I think for simple custom post types, it's actually a really good alternative. Um, so what it does is it allows you to do custom post types and custom fields. It's got a lot less installs than CPT UI. It's kind of the new kid on the block, but their community is really active. They have their own, um, their own Slack channel. Um, and they, it, it's completely open source. So there is no pro version. So that's a, um, for some people that might be an advantage. For a lot of people that's a disadvantage because it means that you also don't have support. This is what it looks like. I think the UI is much nicer for beginners than um, CPT UI. It's uh, a lot less scrolling involved. So that's the longest page that I could find in, CPT, in, uh, in pods. So if you are absolutely brand new to custom post types and you want to give it a whirl, my suggestion would be start off with pods and then graduate to something a little bit more complicated. Um, someone actually introduced me to this one on Friday. I'm not going to spend any time on it, but if you are a developer and you want to like level up, check it out. It seems pretty cool. Um, one of the disadvantages, I guess, um, that I saw with it is that the um, interface does require you to go outside of the WordPress dashboard. Um, so that you, and I think they've got like a, a generator or something. So check that out if you haven't seen it before. It looks pretty neat. I'm going to have a play with it tomorrow. Um, and that's what their generator looks like. Um, and then we get to advanced custom fields. Um, did anyone attend Alex's talk yesterday about using advanced custom fields for blocks? It was really, really interesting. Um, and that's also what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, but Advanced Custom Fields is a fantastic plugin. It was created by Elliot, who I don't think is in the room at the moment, because he did let me know that he was going to have to disappear. Um, I promised him that I wouldn't uh, bag it out. So uh, everyone tell him I said super nice things about it, all right? Uh, but it can be used with any post type, including um, things like uh, WooCommerce posts, uh, so products and um, reviews and stuff like that. Um, it can be used with existing, like with posts, just your regular posts, post types that you create using CPT UI um, or using pods. So um, that's really useful. It has been around for a really long time and it has a pro version as well, which means if support's really important to you, that's something that um, I think is, um, is really helpful. Um, they, it also is, uh, has much better integration, I think, with, uh, compared to something like pods with Gutenberg. And one of the um, perks, I think, of using ACF is that it allows you to add, um, for example, hang on, we'll just, this is what the UI looks like, if you want to add a custom field. Um, and it allows you to add stuff on the sidebar there, uh, which is really nice. Um, and it's a lot cleaner if you're using the Gutenberg. Let's say you want to add a custom field to a post. Um, if you've got a massive long blog post on there, you don't want to have to scroll all the way to the bottom to add your custom field in a meta box. Unfortunately, with pods, that's the only way to do it at the moment. So uh, I just want to duck back super quickly to the last point on here about ACF using the existing tables. So I mentioned that all of the post types are stored in the post table, right? Um, well, all of the custom fields and all of the fields in general are stored in what's called the post meta table. And usually that's not a problem. That's just how WordPress works, right? But it can be important if you've got a ton of information, 
right? And there are very small number of times where it can be a problem, right? And I came from um, the weirdest introduction into WordPress ever because I actually came from an SQL background. So of all of the languages that make up the WordPress stack, um, a lot of people don't even consider SQL to be a coding language. It's a very odd place to start. But to me, it's always been confusing that that's the way that the WordPress databases work. And when you're doing a lot of queries and you've got a lot of custom fields and a lot of data, it can make a big difference not having um, those things in a column rather than uh, having them in the meta fields table. So in pods, one of the neat things that I discovered is that you can create advanced content types and you can create custom post types using their own custom database tables. Now, while this is really cool um, and it's pretty easy to do, you just activate it from the components menu for those of you that want to give it a whirl. Please don't do it unless you need to because it also means that a lot of the things that um, make WordPress WordPress um, and allow you to use other plugins to do cool stuff, you're not going to be able to achieve that if it's all in a different table and it's looking for something that's not there. So when you would use advanced content types would be things like data separation is important um, or if you're doing really big queries, then you might actually want to consider that. And the other time is if you're going to be resetting your data a lot. Because if you're resetting your data a lot, especially if you have a lot of fields and a lot of data, um, that's basically going to mean doing massive queries on your, um, your post meta database. So that's where you might want to look into that. Um, if you are interested in looking at what custom fields and custom post types can do, I really, really strongly recommend uh, when it comes out watching Alex's talk because it was one of the best ones that I've seen um, all, all weekend. Um, so good work with that. And I'm really looking forward to actually trying out ACF blocks. Um, and you can actually also do it using that metabox.io one that someone introduced me to on Friday. I can't remember who it was. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited about playing with it. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. I think uh, we're running a little bit behind, so I don't know if we've got time for questions or not. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of into the water, right? I mean, yeah, if anyone does want to ask me a question, I will be around in the break um, and I'll be around for the rest of today. Um, if you want to like, ask me questions on Twitter, I'm at Joe Mini on basically everything. Uh, and if you want to find out about She Codes, uh, go to shecodes.com.au. Uh, there's lots of custom post types on there. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about custom post types, I'm also an advisor with the Australian Small Business Advisory Service. So have a chat to me about that program if that's something you'd like to know more about. And thank you for listening to me ramble.